What are some of the key words we should keep in mind when talking to women? The words we should be using in a lot of sentences when talking to women since they are mostly emotional. Um, all right, so I don't think you should think of it in the lens of what are the exact words because the language is infinite. I mean, I don't even know how many words are alone in the English language, but there are uh, endless amounts of words to express what we want to convey. Uh, and they're all important and they all can make an impact. So the way that I would think about it is more so, yes, uh, emotional words. So whenever I'm talking about subjects, subject matter, um, I have an interest in skiing or literature, poetry. Uh, you want to get to that next layer of what are my feelings around this? What do I love about it? Why do I care about this? How does it make me feel when I read this poetry? Um, how has it moved me? Um, do I want to write poetry myself and why? And try to not just get into that first layer of like the data exchange. Oh, I like poetry. This guy reads poetry on Sundays. Um, but rather tapping into why all those things matter to you, why you invest that time, you know, why, why you've realized it's changed you. So getting into that next layer of introspection um, and being able to share that, that's what women want to hear. It's not about the words, it's about your feelings because what they're connecting to is not words, they're connecting to values, right? And personality traits. And they're saying, whoa, this person is really strong or creative or introspective or thoughtful. Um, so the words that you convey around that will, will start to showcase the values. That's what makes you attractive. Um, I would say, Choose words that are descriptive. So if anybody's written a resume, okay, you choose power words when you describe something. So you don't just say like, um, I like poetry. Okay, you would say I'm obsessed with poetry. I devour poetry books like nothing. Um, I could en enrapture myself. I could wrap myself in a poetry book all day long. Okay, just something that gives an actual um, more concrete visual or feeling just evoked from the word. You can look up power words or descriptive words um, and you really just want to create like a strong emotional response or a vision when you're saying these things. You're trying to tell a story and you're like, I was really scared going into this house and um, I, I, I was really afraid the whole time. I would dig into my experience and say, well, I wasn't just scared, I was terrified, I was shaking. Um, I was questioning my sanity. I could feel the dread pouring down my face, right? Trying to explore a more accurate, a more descriptive, a more concrete, a more emotionally striking um, way to phrase that is, is really going to carry somebody through a story or, or really connect them to a deeper level of you. I also think just in general, the element of surprise, especially with humor, is the basis of a lot of humor and a lot of good, interesting story, is when you're talking about something and then you suddenly reveal a quality about yourself they didn't expect, or you give a perspective that was unexpected. So like, let's go back to that story of like walking into a place and being really scared. Um, you know, I was walking into this place and I was just terrified. And I remember the lights were kind of dim and I was like feeling dread on my face. And I was like, I can't be here. And then suddenly, all of a sudden, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna boss through this. I'm gonna do it. And my hands were shaking, but you know what? I still, I still kind of did it. And, and I took charge and I went into the haunted place with my friends or whatever. And you give some contrast that they weren't expecting. Um, that is really powerful as well. Uh, you know, there's a cool, like when you say like interest, like normal words to somebody and you're like house, prairie, garden, chair, um, I don't want to say something too dark, murder. And then you go back to, you know, normal words that, that difference, right. Is the thing that stands out most and strikes people. So if you can learn how to like have some polarizing views or say something unexpected in a story, um, or have a really different perspective than they expect, especially if you're a quiet guy. So there's a lot of introverts, right? This is a great example. A lot of the guys I work with are introverts. I'm kind of somewhere in between. But if you're somebody who's quiet and, and, and you know, more introspective uh, and you're like sharing something 
And then all of a sudden you have a moment of where you really lean into it and you're passionate about a subject. Okay. You don't need to be the guy that's like extrovert and passionate all the time. I actually think sometimes being quiet and well-spoken and be like, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to save the world with like human relationships. And I think it's really important. And it drives me nuts that people just don't take this so seriously. I think it is the fundamental point of human existence is to, to have meaningful connections. And yeah, it just, it really weighs on me a lot. Um, and you have a moment where you get fired up that's in contrast to your normal personality, for example, that's going to strike people and leave a moment on them. My, I'll give you one other example. My dad almost never swore or raised his voice in his life. The few times where he would, whoo, that rocks me more than anything else. As opposed to people who yell and scream and are bullies or intimidating or whatever all the time, you get used to it. But somebody who's more well-spoken and calm and then they have a moment of fire, it'll leave an impression on you maybe for the rest of your life. So I think overall, don't think about specific words because they're infinite. I think really start to get good at exploring the emotions behind the things you say. And you can practice that all the time. I tell guys endlessly, alone, when you're at your house, whatever, um, practice it with friends, really get comfortable with that or, or the emotions that you want to know from others. You know, what's the scariest thing you've, you've done for yourself in the last year and get really curious about not just where did they travel, but what was the moment during their travels that they still cherish? Um, and then getting good at just starting to use different words and explore vocabulary there. And I think the way to do that is just like, yeah, look up a lot of great words, read some more literature well, especially fiction. If you've never read a lot of fiction books, a lot of guys that come to me read a lot of nonfiction, so do I. What really started to under, uh, expand my vocabulary and my ability to convey emotion and story is reading stories, reading fiction. Um, I always used to obsess about nonfiction and self-improvement, and I think I became an infinitely better writer, speaker, um, even communicator when I started reading a lot of great fiction writers. Again, a lot of men just focus on like behaviors and say like, oh, how do I act cool or appear cool? They don't think about, it's not about the words, it's about the depth, right? It's about the values. It's about sharing human experience. That's what people remember. They're not gonna remember a phrase unless that phrase moved them, right? When we think of great quotes or great, you know, a great line from somewhere, it's because it did something to us. It wasn't just like some generic string of words. It conveyed an image or it moved us in a certain way.